I tend to spend far too much time looking at old maps, largely looking at the lines and the marks and the features, the tapestry of a millennia of footsteps that have gone before us. What made people choose this route or that route? Why did they take the ridge and not this ridge? Why not the valley? So many questions. So this is Nook Castle, and although it dates back to the Iron Age, there's some really interesting finds here that are quite relevant. I think just to our west, a Roman cornstone was found. Just to our north here, they found a Roman corn kiln. I think a lot of this actually dates back to the Iron Age and beyond. I think even Sir Richard Hoare in the early 1800s uh, remarked that uh, the villages here are marked with great cavities and black soils and even the untrained eye will be able to pick out the villages and the streets. But this didn't add up as we're miles from any major Roman road. If flower production was done here in Roman times and transported to the local towns or cities or villas, then surely it would have been done closer to a road network, wouldn't it? Now there are still a number of the known Roman road networks visible today. Have a look for the classic earthwork symbol on an OS map and fingers crossed you might just find the classic ridge of the Roman road on the ground, commonly referred to as the Agar. But what about the minor road networks? Surely the Romans had more than just these main roads. My mind then went back to something I'd seen as a kid on an OS map. Roman Villa, not too far from my hometown. So I never really thought about that villa again until I came across that find, the cornstone up on Nook in Wiltshire. So how exactly is a villa here in North West Hampshire linked to the cornstone back in Wiltshire? Well, give me a minute to explain exactly how they are, at least in my head. Now the villa is just to my right somewhere, we'll try and find the location in a second, and I've walked up this trackway. It's very, very old. There's countless species in the hedgerow on the right, some extremely old trees, and a lot of earthworks on the side of the hill. So my mind is saying to me, how exactly did the Romans that lived here get to that point? What route did they take? Now there's a couple of local major Roman roads, but they're still about three or four miles away in each direction. So from the south, there seems a really obvious direct route from the portway. But before we take a look at that, I guess we had best check out to see if there are any other sites locally that might perhaps help piece this little question together. So I looked up all the archeological records for this area and I found something which turned the whole notion of this video upside down. This is Callis Corner. I'm about a mile and a half southwest of the Biddeston Roman Villa. And ahead of me just there is a field which in the 1960s a major excavation took place, nothing remarkable to see, but they found a lot of Bronze Age remains. Now they also found a Roman villa. Now that in itself isn't remarkable, but... Yep, you've guessed it, another Roman villa. We'll just cross this sty with a funky dog gate. Not just a Roman villa in this field here ahead of me, but also Roman mosaic, a Roman pavement. There's nothing not much to see. It's just a, a plain field, not even any earthworks. But you're probably beginning to build a picture now, because I certainly am. Now you may not see that picture until we plot them all on a map. Here's where we've been so far as a teaser. Here we are yet again on a slight plateau near the village of Clanville, and yet again another Roman villa was found just the other side of this hedgerow here. Probably afforded a lovely view to the south down the valley. There was a milestone found just in the field there. If you head down to Winchester Museum, you can see that today, and it was uh, dated with the, the, the name of a Roman emperor. So I think later in the Roman era, 
instead of being a milestone, they used to use them as a political propaganda, if you will. Marcus Carinus, the greatest Roman emperor, or words to that effect. It turns out that between his reign, 283 AD and 285 AD, he was almost banished from the records as being one of the worst emperors. It tells you a little bit about uh, the reign he had. Okay, so let's stop teasing you. Why have all these villas given me such a cause to waffle about them to the extent I have? Let's plot them on a map. Now, as I was researching this, one at a time, well, I was quite staggered as to the pattern that was forming before me. They seemed to form a circle, more or less uniform in gap between them. So there's just one more to plot on that map, and that one would seemingly be the one that solves the puzzle. It's a real eye-opener. We'll come back to that very shortly, but in the meantime, none of this is actually helping. None of this is helping us solve the mystery of what a Roman road, B road, looks like. You see, with one villa, well, there'd seemingly be one or maybe two routes down to the main Roman road. It should be quite easy to find. But when you've got half a dozen villas now, all of a sudden that becomes a little bit more complex. So back over here in Wiltshire, you may have worked out why the corn stone and the corn kilns up on the hills at Nook have been bothering me. Now, bothering is probably the wrong word, but given the relatively remote location of those chalk lowlands up there, I decided to visit the village just in the valley, about a mile further south, and the Forden Point here at Hatesbury. See, a little while back, somebody suggested to us that they'd found an old Roman milestone somewhere here near the Forden Point. Now, I've had a really good search around here and I can't find anything at all. There's a few blocks there that could be down on the floor. There's about three Forden Points here that go on through the woods there. And I've searched high and low, but can't see anything. But it does indicate to us that Potentially here is where the Romans crossed the road, headed south uh, from their, their grain workings, maybe up on the hill just to our north. Really wish I could find that stone. So whether or not there was a Roman milestone down at the ford at Hatesbury, well, it doesn't really matter. The point is they did have to get back to the Roman road network to supply either the local economy or the economy further afield, perhaps down as far as Salisbury. Now to do that, they had to get down to Roman road 43. Now that was about seven or eight miles south of that point. So so a quick scan of the likely routes heading south here from Hatesbury using our traditional OS map gives us a couple of options. Southwest from Hatesbury along the Ridgeway, giving us a nice alignment towards Serum. But I couldn't find any evidence on the archaeological records here of any Roman occupation. Now that's not to say that it wasn't used, but we kind of want something tangible here. So this is a second route south from Hatesbury in the Ford back there. And it was the least likely of the two before I started doing a little bit of research. And actually it turns out it's the more likely of the two. I'll come to that shortly because there's something at the top of the hill that's hugely important and does tell us that this is a Roman B road. In the meantime, somebody recently pointed out to me that when you're talking about an ancient trackway, if you take a hundred metre stretch, count the number of different native species within the hedgerow, well, you can times that by 100, and that gives you the age approximately of that trackway. So I think I've done 100 meters here, and I've counted at least 15 different species. So that would mean that it's at least 1,500 years old. Well, that certainly works with the theory. Let's carry on to the top of the hill, and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. I've walked about two miles south of Titherington and Hatesbury where the ford was and just the other side or next to where the barn is now that's flapping about in the wind. Well, that was the site of a Roman villa and that tells us something hugely important. It means that this trackway, north and south, would have been used by the Romans. 
it was the least of the two that I thought would have been used because I thought they would have taken a more direct route back to Salisbury. But who knows, it doesn't matter because it was a Roman villa just there. So what does that tell us? Well, this tells us what a Roman B road looks like. It looks like an old trackway. Ahead of us, the trackway continues, probably another two miles to go at least until we get to that traditional Roman road, the lead road. But certainly quite pleased that the research has led us to this exact spot. And this is what a B road would look like. So now that we've satisfied our curiosity a little over in Wiltshire with the movement of grain, what happened to the last thing I was going to plot on that map? The missing piece of the puzzle in those circled of Roman villas. Well, it turns out that right in the centre of all those villas was a Roman bath, found right here next to the main road between Andover and Swindon. Now, nothing substantial there, but it was likely a communal point for all of those Roman villas that lived in this circle of land. With no evidence of traditional Roman roads here and a mass of modern agricultural tearing things up, we're left guessing with what the local roads and routes would have looked like, perhaps except for one. So I think one of the biggest clues for me today in our search for a Roman B road is probably this. This is a terrace up to the Biddeston Villa. And I think if you're affluent enough to have a, a villa in this area as a Roman, then you certainly be uh, looking to build yourself a nice road up to your villa. And this has clearly been terraced at some point. Maybe it's not Roman at all. It's just me speculating, I'm not an academic. And uh, that's what you get with this channel. Bit of speculation for me. So it's been an interesting journey for me today. I've been Paul. If you like this sort of content, then obviously give us a like and a, a comment below. Uh, we'll see you this time next week. Thanks for watching.